All right. Hi, guys. Uh, we are live. My name is Andrew, and I'm part of SC Rankings marketing team. And today we are joined by Philippe Bazon of Hedgehog Digital. Um, let me get, say a couple of words about Philippe. He's the chief SEO officer at Hedgehog, Hedgehog Digital, a dig digital marketing agency based in Cornwall with offices in Bedford, UK and Sao Paulo, Brazil. Since 2015, Felipe has been listed as one of the top three SEOs in Brazil, having won the title in the same year. With over 10 years of experience in SEO and content marketing, Felipe has managed over 100 SEO projects for multinational companies in Brazil, UK, and Europe. Before I give the word to Felipe, let's just get a couple of things out of the way. Um, first, I wanna uh, make sure that everyone can see and hear us. So if you do, uh, let us get, uh, let us know where you guys are joining us from today. Yeah, I already see a couple of responses from Louise and Shivos. Mm -hmm. Just wait a couple of more seconds just to make sure that everything is going good. Malaysia, Italy. Okay, so th thank you guys for joining us. Uh, so before I give the word over to Felipe, uh, I just want to say what today is going to be about. Today we're going to talk about how to optimize for user intent. Uh, so you don't have to take any any notes. There's going to be a recording. We're going to send it to you uh, to your email inbox as well. Uh, you can chat catch it on our YouTube channel as well after. Oh, I see a lot of engagement. The U.S., Ireland, Hungary. So from people from all over the world. Malaysia, excellent. Uh, so there will be a replay and we will be giving out a little sp something uh, at the very end uh, to all of you guys. So, and uh, we will have a Q&A session. So make sure to find that chat. So yeah, you already did. And that is where you should just uh, throw in your questions and I will uh, monitor them and we will have a Q&A session, session with Felipe at the very end. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to give Felipe the word. Take it away, Felipe. Hi, Andrew. Thank you very much for having me here. Thank you, SE Ranking. It's a pleasure to do this webinar with you guys. I already did one for the Brazilian audience. Now this is the first one for the broader audience here. It's very nice to see. I got my chat here. It's a lot of people sing from other places like Ecuador, Canada, Israel, Hungary, Egypt, Italy. So hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. And today we're going to talk about this Theme that's how to optimize for user intent, how to optimize for search intent of some, a very important part of SEO nowadays. So I'm gonna share my screen here and I think I'll need Andrew to give me a hand when I press play on my, uh, let me know when you, when you guys can see it. I got you guys on the chat here. Not sure if it's already, yeah, it's there, so good. Sorry for the inconvenience here, guys. So first things first, I always like to introduce myself for those who doesn't know me. Just Google my name, Felipe Bazon, B-A-Z-O-N. Uh, and you know a bit more about myself. I've got a profile on like different uh, blogs around the world. I blog for different companies. I've got my own agency, which is Hedgehog Digital. So I think this is the new business card, isn't it? Our uh, SERP, our search engine results page for our name and for a brand name. That's how I do when I want to know more about someone or a company. So without going with all that extensive resumes of I've done this, I've did that, just Google my name, get to know me. You find my LinkedIn profile. You can add me there. That's where I'm more active. I'm not much of a Twitter guy. So if you want to get to know my content, what I do in detail on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm always sharing stuff on LinkedIn. So moving into what we're going to talk about here today, cars, scales, and cheeseburgers. <laughs> not If you thought it was about SEO, you got it wrong. <laughs> Not really, guys. So these three uh, images here, like a Rolls Royce, this representation of a scale, but you see that it's not exactly that, and the cheeseburger. What do they have in common? These three uh, 
things, let's say a car, a cheeseburger, and what is a representation? The first represent, representation of the buyer's journey were created were in 1904. They were all created in the same year. So yes, if you think about the, the current, and it's very similar, you understand what I'm talking about when I show you different images here. If we are talking in 2021 about a buyer's journey or how users get to the, the awareness stage, to the action stage, to the transaction stage from 1904, I think we're a little behind. I think we need to review how we think about our buyer journey. So this was the first mention of the buyer's journey using the ADA model in the salesmanship or magazine of 1904, so over 115 years or nearly 120 years old, the representation of the buyer's journey that we use nowadays, the attention, interest, desire, and action. And since then, this similar method or representation of the buyer's journey has taken different forms, but it's still very linear if you think about it awareness, consideration, decision. This is the more convenient ADA model, attract, conversion, close, delight. Some of them trying to get a little bit different, but they're still very linear. They're still like at that line between awareness and purchase or advocacy or loyalty. But they all kind of like represent the same thing. They're just, it's a very linear way of thinking about how our user will get to your products or to your services or convert on your website. So if you if we're still thinking about this, this funnel, I think we need to rethink the way we are considering creating our strategies. And this is where the whole theme of this webinar comes into place. We're gonna question the current buyer's journey. We are gonna provoke the way it is because things are changing. There is this article about the search intent in the marketing funnel from Think with Google, where this gets, when I saw that, I said, this makes a lot of sense. And we've been using this at Hedgehog and our strategies for quite some time now. So what we need to think about is forget about everything we know about the traditional marketing funnel. Why? Because nowadays we, have different touch points, our journey or our decision process, it's very, like how can I put it? It's, it occurs in different moments, like it's unpredictable, it's unexpected as, as we're seeing on that phrase there. So we turn to our devices at different stages and depending on how we are impacted by a ad or a necessity. So if we think about, if we're still compiling our strategies, thinking about the traditional sales funnel, we are gonna lose a lot of business nowadays, especially putting together a, com a concisive SEO strategy. Why I'm saying that? It's not just me that is saying that. Google has already understood that. And there is this PDF or this study, Decoding Decisions, the Messy Middle of Purchasing Behavior, which is decoding the messy middle all these actions that we take or consumers take before taking a decision. You get, you do a search on your phone and then you go to a, a review website and then you go to social media, you go to YouTube, you go to different places before you take that decision, the final decision of purchasing. Google has kind of like simplified what it considers to be the new buyer's journey. But as you can see, is far from linear. There is like the triggers, the exploration, the evaluation, the experience, the exposure until we get to the purchase. But in all of that, there is one thing that is constant, that is always there in a buyer's journey. And it's this guy here. Ah, you thought I was gonna talk, I weren't gonna talk about SEO or Google, right? So either way, in unexpected moments, linear or not, messy or not, most of the time users, your consumer, your audience is gonna use Google to find an information that will lead them 
to the decision making process and understanding this it's very important because why because when every time we go into google we are showing an intent right we want to do something we want to look for information we want to look for more knowledge we want to look for a product compare and so on so why not search intent and this is what we're going to look into it here how what's the intent behind each search and the type of content that we need to produce in order to uh, create a more concisive SEO strategy that will resonate with our audience and achieve the results that we are looking for. So the first type of search intent is a very broad one, which is the informational. People here, like the most, it's by far the most common type of search intent. So whether it's a basic request or something that requires a more specific response, we are always going in after that information. And these queries, they are always followed by an interrogative, like a question, what, why, when, how, and so on. You get the idea. So thinking about a strategy about content, we need to understand well, how people search. One of the most common ones is like, look for the temperature and what's the weather like? But there are other things that we also ask, how to travel from one place to another, what to do with kids in Lisbon and so on. Sometimes these this informational queries does, are not followed by a question, but also, I look for information. So this is what we need to understand and try to address because this is the first stage of people are looking for information. We, we want our brand to be present there when people are starting that sales process or that journey towards the purchase, but they are looking for information. So being present there, mapping those queries is very important. I'm going to show you guys two ways that we can do that. Moving forward, also very interesting to note that this informational type of queries tend to trigger, most of them trigger featured snippets. So it's very important to be aware of that, map those opportunities and optimize for that, trying to get that featured result. Many people think, defend that it does steal away some clicks Strategies that we run across the board in Brazil, UK, Spain, Portugal, all the Argentina, all the places that we service our SEO clients have shown that it is a very uh, effective strategy to drive traffic. So aim for those featured snippets, aim to get those results because for a brand that is super important. This is an example of a, a rather small client that we have in the UK, that they are uh, they sell two two specific products, a line of boxing gloves, and also WBC, the World Boxing Council memorabilia, you know, T-shirts, belts, and so on. So we had a very limited uh, type of products or pages that we could work with. So building that traffic was going to limit us. So what did we do? We attached or we created a blog for that e-commerce. And we have been blogging about information around uh, boxing, exercises, diet plans. And look, at this is just one example of what we managed to get for a very interesting keyword, very highly searched keyword, very important for our, for our client's business that is helping us not just bringing traffic, but raise the awareness for such a small brand. We're competing at the same level as the big guns, but achieving those results with a smaller client and the awareness that that brings us and the reputation. So think about that. Think about your content. It's not just about bringing traffic. It's also, it also helps you gain more authority and drive the, those people towards the purchase. So how do we map those informational intent ideas? I, norm I, will, I normally use this tool here, and I, I know you guys might also know, also ask, but it has been under maintenance for quite a while. 
But I also have two other ways that I'm going to help you guys find ideas of doubts that users might have when they're searching for your products. One of them comes straight from straight from your Google Analytics account. If your guys are if you guys or one of your clients is also doing uh, PPC advertising, if you go into the acquisition report, Google Ads search query, and then you go into advanced filters, and you're gonna add this matching regesp or regular expression of how, what, when, why, and where. Look at the, the queries that I think it's very small. I don't know if you guys can see it, but when you receive the material, you'll be able to zoom in. These, what are those? Are all questions that users asked into Google that triggered your ad that you didn't even have the answer for it. So this is a real nugget here because you, these are doubts that users already asked Google. So with this information here, you can create an FAQ section. You can create topic ideas for your blog. You can answer the doubts that users have around your services. Users, straight from users, not coming from any other tool. So this is very, very useful for you guys to come up with ideas to or understand if users or consumers, better saying, are having doubts around your products and you can answer them. You can use this in a FAQ within your service pages, independent FAQ pages, and as I said, blog posts to answer those questions. Another place that I like to use it, this as well, it's on Google Search Console. As you know, recently Google allowed us to use regex there as well, regular expressions. So if you copy and paste the same uh, regular expression that I just used on the, the filter on Google Analytics, you also gonna get, get questions that users are asking Google that are generating visits, clicks, and visibilities to your website. In this case, we are already doing quite well with it, but think about the opportunities that you have, that questions that you might not even think about users have around your product and you're not addressing them. So these two, we could call hacks, our data is straight from your tools, straight from Google, not yours, but Google Analytics and Google Search Consoles, from data related to your website, people that might already be visiting your website and you're not addressing those questions. So it's very important to, to think about that. So commercial investigation. This is another type of search intent. Think about here the user start, he already knows, he doesn't know what he wants, but he's, start, he's starting to compare things. He, he already knows, but he, he hasn't decided for the brand, he hasn't decided for the type of product that he's looking for. So this intention sometimes might be expressed like a comparison. People might be comparing types of different products to come up with some ideas. So here, like looking for a best accounting software, as you can see, people are like searching for it. He wants to know which is the best one. How do you how do you address that? Maybe maybe creating a list and so on. But most popular is when you compare two different products like Mac and Windows laptops, or when you do a comparison between different type of uh, products. Like this one, is, it's in Portuguese, but I just want to emphasize that it's very important to analyze the serve. When you do a comparison, like this is like Nike football boots against Adidas football boots. This is a serve with traditional search results. And as you can see, all results are video coming from YouTube. So if you reverse engineer this, an article is not going to cut it. When you see a serve, that brings that type of information, you need to understand that this is what users want. So a content, a textual content here is not gonna cut it. You need to understand that and address that with the right content, otherwise you're never going to rank. And here the similar, in in, sorry, from Portuguese to English now, is slightly different, but as you can see, videos are also on the highlight there, the people also ask box, my point here, guys, is, guys, is understand the SERP. Look at the SERP, 
for the terms that you want to rank for and try to understand what Google is showing up there. This is going to help you address the intent. Moving on, the third type of intent is the most common one, I would say, when you're thinking about purchases, which is the transactional intent. Here, the user wants to buy something, but it's not all the time that he's going to use right, the name of the product. Sometimes he's going to look for cheap iPhones or Nike running shoes or buy sunglasses. This is the most, let's say, traditional one. But what you need to understand is that the more transactional it is, the term, the more competitive it is. And sometimes the organic results are going to be pushed further and further down. Even for this long tail here, like hotels, central Lisbon, four stars with swimming pool. And in some variants, we're not fighting against the ads, but also some of the Google features like hotels, for instance. So you need to be aware of that because sometimes you're going to be pushed way, way down. But also look for signs of what you need to work on your SERPs. Look at this one, like a, a transactional term. I want to buy that type of contest boxing gloves and Google brings videos, images above the first search results. This is a hint that users searching for that term are looking for videos and images. So how do you enhance the content on your product and your category pages? By working with those types of formats because this is what the users want and address is what users want. It's not what Google wants. Does it make sense? So think about that. Always reverse engineer what Google is bringing on Google search results in order to have better uh, optimization strategies in order to address the user intent. So I think you guys get in the picture here. I'll have a few more examples, but this is where we are leading with this. Another place that we have been looking into optimizing quite a bit in bringing traffic and also sales for e-commerce is, is Google Images. A lot of like consumers are using more and more Google images to find, look for products. So also make sure that your images are well optimized and you're showing up there and that will help also create an extra source of traffic to your e-commerce, to your website and so on. So again, going back here, if you see images and don't forget you look how your rankings are looking on Google images, because this could be a very profitable source of an extra organic search traffic to your website. Two more types of intent here, guys. Navigational. This is like a very straightforward one. Users want to find a specific website, but they can be bothered to type in www.seranking.co. They go into Google and search for information. So most of these queries are branded terms. And why it's so important to look for that. Here's just an example. A lot of people use Bing to find Google. That's very bad for Bing, but that, that's the sad truth. But what I want to highlight here is the fact that when you're talking about navigational intent, you need to cater for your brand. How does your SERP look when someone searches for your brand name, for your name, for your client's name? Are you taking care of that? Uh, a good friend of mine, Jason Barnard, he, he, I, I'm not sure if he coined the term, but he's the one that always saying that your branded SERP is your new business card. And it is, isn't it? Because when you do a search, when you, well, we get to know a brand, you need to do a search. What do you do? You go and search for that brand's name and see how it's looking and looking for the website and so on. So it's very important to cater for that. So make sure that your brand... SERP, it's well taken care of. Your meta description is good. All your site links are showing up well. Are there other positive results that can be shown on your SERP or there are negative ones? Try to address them as well. So cater for your brand SERP. It's very important. It's your business card. Sometimes the first point of contact between you and your new customer. And the last type of search intent, guys, is the location-based. 
Here are local search queries, you know, when you're looking for certain places in Cornwall or the famous coffee shops near me types of searches or the type near me types of searches. So sometimes you say, but I'm not just a local brand. I'm like an e-commerce. Do I need to cater for that? Sometimes it depends on your type of business. But these queries are normally dominated by what? Look, the local pack. Therefore, it's super important for you to cater for your Google My Business listings, make sure you are optimizing that to its fullest, you know, from business descriptions to adding more images, looking for reviews. So it's very important because as you can see, similar to what we saw in like with the hotels example, that the Google, that the Google put a lot of ads and that box of hotels, similar happens here. So local queries, you need to look into make sure that you're showing up in the local pack. So optimize your Google My Business, make sure you're using the correct categories, the descriptions. If you have products, list the products there, images, and most importantly, go after those reviews. Talk to your customers, ask for reviews, they are one of the most important ranking factors within the local pack or Google local results. It's just like another example when someone does a coffee shops near me. This is a very kind of like broad type of term, but again, you need to make sure that your business is showing up on the local pack. I know there is the proximity factor here as well, but I think the first and most important features like to make sure that your business, your Google My Business listing is up to date. And now, uh, before I continue, I think Andrew will share with you guys, we, we've got a detailed guide on uh, how to optimize for search intent, our, fun, our comprehensive guide around search intent optimization, that there's a lot of information there that you guys could, could follow through. It's a very detailed guide. I hope it helps you complement what we just discussed here. And if you have any doubts or any questions, we can address them at the end. So how do we understand user intent through SERP analysis? Remember that I told you the example of these guys here. If you see a SERP that only brings results from YouTube and videos, and this is not from Google videos, this is a like normal search result, normal quote marks here, right? But if you see just videos, it's not an article of 2,000 words that's going to put you in first place. Google is already telling you that users that do that type of query are looking for videos. So how do you get to the top of that SERP? You're going to need a YouTube, a YouTube channel and a good video there in order to rank and have at least a chance to be visible for that type of query. And just to reemphasize, give users what they're looking for and look into what Google is telling us. If you see videos and images, the video carousel, the image pack at the top of the search results, Google is already telling you that people searching for that query are interested in videos and images. How do you enhance your content? How do you increase the relevancy of your content? By adding those formats to your copy, to your product pages, to your articles. So always, guys, always look for what the SERP is telling you. That's the, that is the great, greatest secret of how to optimize for user intent. Reverse engineer Google. It brings you a lot of information, a lot of insights there. And be aware of where your users are. Even though this is a rather slightly old information from a study that Spark Toto from Randy Fishkin published a few years ago, it's still very similar. A lot of people are still using, you obviously Google, but Google Images is growing quite fast. Google Maps as well and YouTube. So make sure to understand where your users are and make sure you are optimizing or producing content and present in those features because all of them, you can apply SEO, Google, Google Images, Google Maps, and even YouTube. So if there's a search box, you can optimize for, you can improve your rankings there. So make sure you understand that. Make sure you understand where your 
audience is and try to deliver that to them. And just to sum things up here, guys, I like to use this image because, you know, Piccadilly Circus is one of the most expensive billboards in the world. And but if you think about look at this image, look at how interesting it is. Nobody's looking at that billboard there. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be there. Obviously, if you have the money to advertise on Piccadilly Circus, by all means, please do so. But my point here is like some people, the word now, nowadays is very, very busy. People are just like crossing everywhere. Well, nowadays it's slightly different, as you know, but we're not paying attention to those type of things. But when we go into Google, we're already telling people what we want. And Google is always trying to show us that path, like what people are asking, what people are querying the search engine, what are the doubts that they have around a, diff a certain product in order to try to guide us towards that. So my point here is the importance of understanding the user intent, not just for SEO, but for marketing purposes as a whole, because every time we go into Google, we are with an intention. We're telling Google what we want. And our job as, as marketeers is to reverse engineer that, understand that, and address that with content in our websites. Because it's still about people, guys. It's, like, it's a human search, and this is what we need to understand. User intent, it's there. And so Google is already telling us by addressing the search intent. This is what you guys should not forget, still about users, people, humans. And to sum things up, this little phrase that I like to use here, to understand and address the intent behind each search query is essential for SEO success. You might be expecting this, this chat here to show you a lot of like coding, structured data, this, that, and the other, but no, I try to simplify things around the intent. You see, just with Google, you can compile a very successful SEO strategy. Obviously, you still need to think about all the other technicalities around SEO and so on. But this is one of the most important features that you need to understand in order to create very interesting, very successful SEO campaigns. Uh, I leave you guys with an invitation to have a look at my YouTube channel, Don't Panic, It's Organic. I've interviewed quite a few famous SEOs around the world there. Craig Gamble, Ren Fishkin, Aleida. It's a very interesting chat. All these people that I met throughout the, the events. I was talking with Andrew before. I missed those events. So, yeah, I invite you there. And if you want to follow up, follow me or extend the chat towards the... Uh, social channels i'll be i'll be a pleasure to talk with you guys there and yeah muito obrigado <laughs> thank you thank you felipe it was a lot of too so uh, a lot of information to take in for sure so we're gonna uh, send over all the information to our viewers so they can soak it all in at their own pace and um, and right now we have an opportunity to ask felipe any questions relating to the topic of the webinar and just to get things started i have a question on my end when you were showing the earlier on in the presentation, the featured snippet, uh, what about the zero position? Uh, is there some way to optimize for this featured snippet and still get benefits of people interacting with you? Because, uh, like, is there some piece of advice that you can that you can say that will get people to still click on you and get the featured snippet as well? Look, uh, there are a few things that you need to address in that point because. Google has uh, some limitations around feature snippets. So for instance, if you notice that the query that you are trying to get the feature snippet is a list, try to make a list bigger than eight because Google truncates the results after the eight uh, point and that has like click for more. So you're trying to kind of like hack what Google is showing up. Similar with tables and even with the, uh, with the paragraph. So, and most of the time, the information is just a part of what they're looking for. So I always, we use as a part of uh, optimization, optimizing for feature snippets to try and get more traffic. You know, it does 
you, you can't have the ambiguity now. You mentioned rank zero, position zero. Since 2019, Google removed that ambiguity from the search results. You can't be like on, on the result or like below the featured snippet and on the featured snippet as it was before. Nowadays, you're either on the featured snippet or on the top 10. So being there is just like, where are you gonna get the click? Okay, thanks. So just guys, I wanna remind you that this is the, this is the Q&A session. And if you have any questions related to the topic, we are welcome. Uh, you are welcome to ask them. Um, and the next, I, I'm, I could, could ask you another question, but let me just see if somebody starts getting, starts joining in on the discussion. Don't be shy, guys. <laughs> Even if you didn't understand a word I said. <laughs> Yeah, about this your position like with mobile results it's even more uh it's even more uh, like uh, you can feel even more uh, the absence of a click like whenever whenever you, like even when you ask google like what the weather is they just show you the answer and you don't really respond to it okay yeah, so we have we'll go on sorry we have a let me let me show it up on the screen um so we have a question from louise we work mostly with organic SEO. Do you think organic SEO serves a site better than PPC? Well, I always like to say that you need to do a bit of both, not always put your eggs in just one basket, if you will. So balance things out between a good organic SEO strategy complement with PPC or the other way around. Start with PPC until you get a good SEO performance and then balance things out. But since nowadays everything's very competitive, the more landscape that you can cover on Google search results, uh, the better, because the traffic is rather the same. People searching for, say, SEO, if they click on the paid search results or on the organic, they are after the same thing. Hopefully okay, I... Thank you. Yeah, I hope that answers your question, Louise. So we have uh, another question, let's move on. Uh, what characteristic would qualify a page to be listed as the featured snippet? Oh, I'm going to use the first, it depends <laughs> of the, <laughs> look, uh, it's, it, it really depends. But the first things first, you need to be ranked in first in the top 10 results. Also, there are some studies that show that you're more preeminent to show up on the featured snippet when you're on the top three. Structured data also helps with the articles, especially when you're doing a list, tables, depending on the type of feature snippet that you are using. So first thing, the first characteristic is to be ranked in the top 10 for that term that you're after. And then structuring your content to have the best answer for that type of query. Study what's showing up on the, on the, on the feature snippet. So if you see that it's a list, you're gonna to need to work with a list or if it's a table or an image or a video, that's what you need to aim for. So the type of content, structure data and rank in first page. Those are the top three qualifiers, I'd say. Thanks, um, let's, we have a question from Patrick. Uh, how do you get an initial rush of traffic to help rank your blog? Well, as I said, you could pay for the traffic. You could buy in the traffic from social media, from PPC, until you get the rankings that you're looking for. And for SEO, always aim for the less competitive terms, you know? The strategy that I, I showed when you do the FAQ mapping for with Google, with Google Analytics data and Search Console data, that is a very, uh, it's one of the quickest way to build up your organic traffic because Sometimes those queries are not very competitive. It's easy to rank and they generate a lot of traffic. So if you want to boost the rank, I'll, I'll start working with those uh, strategies around the, this less competitive terms. All right. Thank you once again for your answer. Uh, yeah, we're going to wait for another minute. And if nobody has any questions, no, don't, doesn't want to use this amazing opportunity to ask Felipe directly, 
something specific about your company, a situation that maybe you're experiencing about in your work. Otherwise, we're gonna we're gonna end it. So don't okay. be shy. Guys. At least we had a few questions. I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Oh, okay. So thanks. Thank God, Louise here to save the day. Uh, <laughs> we have a question. Another from Louise. Okay. Okay. So people are coming in. Thanks. Uh, does posting links out on social feeds help with boosting traffic on uh, to new URLs? Well, boosting traffic, it depends on your audience, on your social media, but yes, it could generate traffic. One, if it, I think everybody might know that, but it's good to emphasize, it doesn't help towards your SEO. Those links are no follow and they don't count towards your quote marks authority. They won't help you rank, but they can definitely generate traffic. Uh, but what about engagement? Do they provide any engagement like as positive signals? I, I I don't really, I would say I'm not sure about that and like how the engagement signals from social media help towards rankings as well. That is a very, uh, I'd rather say I don't really know to be honest and I never could prove that. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that helps towards SEO. Her question around traffic, yes, but engagement levels i don't know like how many clicks you get on it not clicks or how many likes you get on that url if that's going to help toward your seo that's a very one of the black boxes of seo still i'd say okay. excellent and let's move on to the next question uh, a site was doing well for jean marc using ppc a site just over a year old then all of a sudden boom the site has dropped 50 percent in, in sales it does really well okay so maybe that was it was cut off so 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 there's probably a question is something must have happened if you can specify your question or finish it that would be really good and right now we're going to move on to the next one that we have because i'm not sure that we can understand what the question is here okay so we have a question from patrick another one have you worked with a data analytics company before and if so how was your experience as a client, no, we never had a data analytics company, so I couldn't. We do work with obviously the analytics for our clients. We have like all this, we integrate all the information in Google Data Studio and our project managers do analyze that to report to clients, but as a client, I never had one. Okay. Uh, let's. Uh, I think the question that we had that um, I, I, I read it that wrong. I thought Jean Marc Mark was that it was a name. It's January. January Mark. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the site was doing really well with PBC, and then something happened all of a sudden. So basically, it depends. That would probably be the question, the the basic answer. But the, okay, so we have the follow up. The follow up is here. Let me bring it up on the screen. So from January to March. It was doing really well with PPC, then sales dropped with no real change to P uh, in the PPC campaign settings. SEO has been building steadily uh, for just over a year, uh, just over a year. So yeah, I'm gonna give it to you, give it to you to respond, but my answer would be dep depends, obviously. I would say you don't understand where we are getting with it, but maybe by the looks of it, something wrong with your PPC campaign. Perhaps and maybe your competitors, maybe your competitors did something to beat you. So you could definitely definitely take a look at your competitors to understand what, what was happening to your SERP specifically for those keywords, maybe. And well, maybe depending on where you are advertising, and if you're advertising sex toys, it could be some some changes in the Google AdWords policy. I don't know, ads being blocked. That's not my really area of expertise, PPC. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, and let's move on to the next one. Uh, how would you suggest beginning to, opti to optimize for a brand new site? Sure, uh, starting with less competitive keywords, but how would you recommend to boost the traffic at the start? Well, to boost the start and to boost the traffic at the start, if it's just uh, organically, you could engage in a very aggressive link building campaign. Avoid going to the dark side, 
but if it depends on it, it really depends on what you're after you know if you say that you know i want to just like boost that traffic and go after as many keywords as i can i would say engage in a very aggressive link building campaign to boost your authority to start ranking for that but if it's just boost traffic as i said uh you could look into different channels like social media paid paid search so it, again it depends on what you you are after word mastermind <laughs> right thank you Felipe, uh, we have another question from Louise. It's my understanding that PPC ranks a site once the campaign is running, but it doesn't hold the place long term once it's over, right? Well, if yes, if you're if you run out of budget, I would say you you, sh you won't show up anymore. Don't quite understand that one to be very. Yeah, honest. It, it means like the, uh, the I think it's the organic results like um. Uh, have a benefit. It's funny, the PPC ranks a site w well once. The, so, so basically, PPC boosts the site's overall rankings, and it just dies off as soon as you stop paying for the PPC campaign, right? Well, there is no correlation between PPC or paid search ads and organic search ads. It doesn't mean that if you're paying for uh, advertising on PPC, your organics, your organics will move up. That's there is no correlation there. So. Don't know where exactly what Louise is asking, but if well PPC, if you run out budget, it won't show up. But advertising on PPC doesn't push your organics up. There's no correlation there. But what about the previous question uh, with boosting a new a new site with PPC campaign campaigns? Is there any effect uh, from PPC campaigns afterwards? Does all the uh, all the money spent on on the uh, attracting a, an audience does it pay off in the in the form of recognition uh, like so people well, click on a on a paid ad and they interact with the page for a long time does that send any positive signal and in the after after you stop paying it can still maybe benefit you in some way the data that you gave Google Google as a res um, through the PPC campaign you you could get recurring traffic from direct visits from those that visited your website through PPC that kind of like engaged with your website and come back at a later date for a new purchase, for a new hiring. So there is the residual traffic, but again, it really depends on what you advertise and your campaigns, your website engagement. There are many variants there to, to say for sure that now, yes, do PPC and then after that, you're going to get some percentage of direct traffic or even branded searches that could lead into organic traffic there well there is too many variants to be to say cor precisely yeah that's mostly the case in, in marketing and seo is uh, depends on a lot of things yeah <laughs> uh all right i think we're gonna end it here thank you a lot philippe for for telling us a lot of interesting information about uh, search intent and i hope it motivated a lot of you guys to actually start thinking about it if you haven't yet. And if you have any additional questions, reach out to us uh, at SU Rankings live chat, or maybe Felipe, you can bring up your last screen uh, with your contact details, just so that people have a reminder of, yeah, yeah. I'll quickly show it up on the screen. And you can, guys can use this opportunity as one last question if you have, if you have one, just one last opportunity. All right. Actually, actually, yeah, it was very interesting for me. But, but but for sure, there's a lot to dig into, and it's not. It's just generally speaking, like I get the gist. But once, you, as soon as you start digging into specific cases, there, that's when it gets interesting, for sure. Yeah. Good. Thank you. That that was a pleasure, guys, being here with you. And please reach out to me on LinkedIn. Hope you guys like the uh, search intent guide that we shared here today. And yeah, I'll be always available if you need me. To, to take any doubts outside here. Great. So thank you once again for joining us and uh, stay safe, everyone. And until next time. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.